This is the Algebra 1 Summer School lesson video for Unit 3, Function, Lesson 1, Definition of a Function. Before we get to the definition of a function, we're going to start with a slightly similar definition but a broader topic called a relation. A relation is a set of pairs of input and output values. So again, a relation is a set of pairs of input and output values. All right, some characteristics of a relation are that we can write them in very different ways. We can write relations as ordered pairs. We can write a relation as a table, and we'll see examples of all these in just a second. We can write a relation as a point on a coordinate plane. We can create a relation as a mapping diagram. And we can also write an, a relation as an equation. Okay. So let's see what this looks like. So down here on the bottom left, we're going to put some examples of relations. So let's talk first about sets of ordered pairs. All right, a relation could be a set of ordered pairs. Now, ordered pairs are just x, y coordinates. So maybe 4, 7, and 3, 2, and 0, 0. All right, that set of ordered pairs right there is called a relation. It's a set of pairs of input and output values. The 4 is the input, the 7 is the output. The three is the input, the two is the output, so on and so forth. We can also have a table as a relation. Okay, so table, you might have input and output values or an XY table. And in that XY table, you might have an input of zero with an output of seven, an input of negative three, an output of negative five, an input of eight, an output of negative one. All right, those are pairs of input and output values. A non-example, things that are not relations, would be just a number. That number is called a constant. It is not a relation because it is not a pair of input and output values. Another thing that is not a relation is a variable. All right, a variable is a placeholder in math. It is not a pair of input and output values. Finally, an expression, 7x, that is also not an input or output value. All right, that's just an expression. All right. Now, here are a very specific example, even more examples of what a relation is. All right, so one more time. Relations can be sets of ordered pairs. So we might have this set of ordered pairs there, negative 5, 2, 5, 6, and 0, 4. Okay. That is a relation. It's a set of ordered pairs, which are input and output values together. All right, number two, it says input-output tables. I have two tables here because you can draw tables horizontally or you can draw tables vertically. All this is is a set of inputs, which are the x values, which correspond to an output. So two corresponds to 0, 5 to 3, negative 1 to 7. Okay. You can also draw a table vertically, which is why I have a second table here. I have a column of inputs that have an output. Okay. That's another example of a relation. On a coordinate plane, we can have a relation that are a bunch of points or ordered pairs. So for example, I could have this point here, negative 4, 0. That is a relation, that point right there. It has an input of negative 4 and an output of 0. I could have the ordered pair 2, 2. That also has an input and an output. All right, the last point on this relation could be 5, negative 3. All right, so this relation, this coordinate grid, has three points. A point is a pair of input and output values. Finally, a mapping diagram. It even gives a description right here that a mapping diagram takes the left shape, what's in the left, the input column here, and draws an arrow to the right shape of the corresponding output. So say we have inputs here of 1, 
2, and 3. And I'll put some negative 4, 5, 7, and 0. What a mapping diagram does is it takes a value from the input and draws an arrow to its corresponding output value. So in this mapping diagram, 1 maps to 7, 2 maps to negative 4, and 5, you can map to multiple outputs, and 3 maps to 0. That is a relation again because it is a set of different pairs of input and output values. Now, that's a, the most broad definition of a relation that you can have. A very specific kind of relation is called a function. So let's fill out this Freire model for this function. Right? A function has the definition of being a relation where every point Oh, I'm sorry, where every input so every input, which are our x values, has exactly one output value, which is a y. Right? So every x value has exactly one y value matched to it. So we'll see lots of examples of this. A characteristic, some things that we should be looking for here when we're deciding if something is a function or not. All right? So typically, if we're looking at a table, so a table of values, right? a function will have no repeating x values. All right, so we will see that in just a second when we do an example here. But when I'm looking at a table of values, we know it's going to be a function if none of the x values repeat. All right, the second characteristic of a function that we use a lot of times to identify is that when we're looking at a graph, all right, graphs, that pass what we call the vertical line test are functions. Right. So again, some things that we know are going to be functions here, some characteristics, oops, are that when you look at a table, that table will have no repeating x values, and when we're looking at a graph, the graph is going to call, pass what we call the vertical line test. So here are some examples of a function. So if I look at a graph, a function could be just a graph of a line. Okay, we'll talk about that vertical line test thing in just a second, but that graph right there is a function. We also have a function for a set of ordered pairs. So for example here, I have the ordered pair 0, 0, 1, 4, and negative 6, 2. That is a function right there. It follows the same rule as looking at a table of values because every one of these x values is different. 0, 1, and negative 6. None of those x's repeat. It's going to be a function. They all have one y value matched to it. We can also use the example of a table right here. So if I have an xy table, I have different x values through the table. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. And they all have one number that matches to them. Negative 7, negative 8, 2, and 9. Those three things are all examples of functions. We're going to look at a lot more in just a minute. All right? The last one here is non-examples, things that are definitely not functions. Okay? So the first one, let's make a graph. If I look at this graph right here, that graph is not a function. It's going to fail what we call the vertical line test, which we're going to talk about in just a second. Now, if I have a mapping diagram, remember my inputs are like my x's and my outputs are my y's. Well, if I have a mapping diagram showing what a function is or is not, here is an example of a mapping diagram that is not a function. Okay. So let me fill in all the values here. Now, when I draw the arrows, suppose I say that 3 
maps to negative 5 and negative 2. And 4 maps to 1 and 5. This mapping diagram is not a function because the input of 3 matches with two different output values, which violates this part of the definition of a function, that each x value has only one output. Same thing with 4. The 4 matches to two different y values, so it's not a function. All right, here's what we're going to look at next. So you're going to see a lot of examples on the board in the coming minutes. We are going to talk together about how we know if one of the relations is a function or not. Now here's one thing we're noticing about graphs. For each graph that is a function, we could draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph, and it should only cross the graph one time. This is called the vertical line test. Right, the vertical line test is really important. We can use it to determine if a graph is a function or not. So here's how it works. I'm going to draw on any graph a vertical line. Now, when I draw this vertical line, on this first graph, it appears that the vertical line crosses this red sideways parabola two times. Because it crosses two times, that means we fail the vertical line test. I'm going to abbreviate that as the VLT. So because you fail the vertical line test, you are not a function. Okay. We're going to look at the second example. If I take this graph and I draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph, it only appears to cross the graph one time. So this graph passes the vertical line test and therefore is a function. Let's look at a lot more different examples here of functions and not functions. We're going to determine, looking at the next few, which of the following relations are functions. We're going to write yes or no. So the first graph here, it might be hard to see, so I'm going to darken in a couple of the dots here. This graph is just a bunch of dots right along there. Now because it's a graph and it's on a coordinate axis, we are going to use the vertical line test here. Now if I were to draw a vertical line, through just this first dot, that vertical line only goes through one point on the graph. So that's a good thing. Every time I draw a vertical line through any of the dots, it only goes through one point. So because each vertical line only crosses the graph one time, this graph is a function. It passes the vertical line test. When I look at the second graph on the right, when I draw a vertical line, through this graph, right on top. That vertical line matches right on top of the other graph. So what I'm going to say is it doesn't just cross the graph one time. That vertical line crosses the graph infinitely many times. So because one graph right on top of each other crosses it infinitely many times, this fails the vertical line test. It is not a function. Because a function can only have a vertical line go through one time. Okay. Now this third graph, same idea. It's a graph. I'm going to use my vertical line test. If I draw a vertical line here, it appears to cross that circle twice. So no, this graph is also not a function. Okay, so I started with three graphs. Let's look at a mapping diagram. When I look at my input values, when I'm looking at a mapping diagram, I'm looking to see if any input has multiple arrows coming out of it. So more than one coming, like leaving the number. Well, when I look at five, five maps to only four, only one value, so that's a good thing. But when I look at zero here, zero maps to two different outputs which violates the definition of a function. So because of this zero mapping to two and to three, this is not a function. All right, this middle graph here is very similar to the very first graph we looked at. We have a few dots, a few points plotted on my graph here. And we're trying to determine if it passes the vertical line test. Well, if I drew a vertical line through each dot, 
it appears that that vertical line only crosses one point, one point per line, which is a good thing. So yes, this is a function. I have another mapping di diagram here. When I look at this mapping diagram, each input only has one line coming out of it. One maps to six. Three has only one output. It maps to six. And five maps to six. Now it's okay that they all go to the same number, there, but the good thing is that there's only one arrow coming out of each input. So that means that yes, this does match the definition of a function. Every input has only one output. All right, let's look at the table here. We said on the top of the, or on the last page where we were stating the definition of a function that a characteristic of a function is that when I look at the table, none of the x's will repeat. Well, when I look here, I have negative 1, 2, and 5. None of those x's repeat, which is a really good thing because that means there's only one y value for each x value. So yes, this is a function. When I have a graph, we're back to graphs, we have to use the vertical line test. If I draw a vertical line anywhere through this graph, it only crosses the graph one time. So yes, this graph is also a function. All right, another graph. If I drew a vertical line here, it appears to only cross the graph one time. So yes, again, this third graph is a function. All right, let's look at a set of ordered pairs this time. This one goes the same as with the table. I'm first going to look at just the x values. Okay. When I look at those x values, none of them repeat. Negative 1, 2, 3, and 8. They're all different, which means none of them have two outputs. They only have the one matching with them. So yes, this is a function. Again, the characteristic is because none of the x's repeat themselves. All right, we're almost finished here. When I look at this graph, it's a bunch of dots one more time. If I draw a vertical line through the first dot, it only crosses once, so we're off to a good start. When I draw a vertical line through the second dot, again, it only goes through one point. But on this third set of dots, notice that the vertical line goes through two points on the graph. That's bad. That means it violates the vertical line test. So no, this graph is not a function. All right, so we draw a vertical line through this graph here. It appears to cross the graph twice, so we do not have a function once again. Final two examples. Let's look at one more set of ordered pairs. Just like we did above, we're always going to look at the x values first. Well, when I look at these x values, it appears that 0, the x value of 0, happens twice. Now, when it happens twice, notice in the first one, 0 maps to negative 5, and then 0 maps to 4 which is a bad thing because the definition of a function says that each x has only one y value. So that means that this set of ordered pair violates the definition of a function, so this is not a function. All right, this last question that's on here is a little bit different. This is actually an OST question for the Ohio State test. And this question asks us to complete the table, the first table, so that f of x is a function. So I want the table on the left to, yes, be a function. And the second table, so it is not a function. So you can pick any numbers that you want here. All right? Let's see. In the first table, if it is going to be a function, that means that I need to put a number into the x column here. That is not negative 1 or 6. I cannot repeat those x's. So I'm going to pick any other number I can think of. So how about 10? I'll put 10 in for x. Now, now, because none of the x's repeat, I can pick any outputs I want for f of x. f of x we'll explore in this unit, but that's the same thing as y. So I can pick any outputs I want. How about I put in 2 and 6? Each one of those x values has only one number that corresponds to it, so that table is a function. Finally, the second table, I want to make it so it is not a function, which means that I need to make one of these numbers, negative 1 or 6, repeat. You can pick your favorite one. I'm going to choose 6. Now that 6 repeats, 
I need to make it so that these two boxes, the 6 with the negative 8 and the 6, this output has to be different than negative 8. Why don't I choose 0? All right, so that means that x repeats with two outputs and therefore violates the definition of a function. Then I can pick any number I want for the top box. So that's the definition of a function note. After this, I want you to go back to Canvas, find the practice for this lesson, and give it a shot. There will be a video available to go through a few problems on the practice with you. If you have any questions, please see the key of the note that is posted on Canvas, or come to office hours and speak to your instructor.